Hello guys, my name is JP, welcome back to Kerbal Space Program. It's been a while, uh, a couple of weeks now. It's already 2014. Anyways, I'm just going to Sandbox real quick, I want to show you a few things. Uh, one, I updated my... You may remember my old flying car. Well, I updated the flying car, so let's have a look at it. Alrighty, let's load it up. Flying car, uh, I think it was 4B is the one that works. Mark 3 is the actual one. Uh, 4 was one that didn't work, and 4B is one that does. Mark 5 doesn't work yet either, I don't think. Let's go ahead and try it out. Uh, basically, I updated it to operate under very high altitude conditions. The problem is, it actually becomes very unstable once this tank is empty, it ends up. Uh, because of the extra drag on the nose now. Other than that, it works pretty much the same. I had to adjust the wings back a little for, uh, like, the gear to compensate for the, the, the gigantic engine sticking out the back. But I can show you how it works real quick. Alrighty, we're here on the runway. I'm not getting the best frames per second. I'm going to have to fix that a little. The game has been kind of laggy since the new version. I don't know what the deal is. Anyways, as you can see, we have all the necessary things. Start up this rapier engine. Throttle up. Uh, since this one is significantly weaker than a jet engine, I can actually run this one at full throttle with no problem. And it should be able to lift off at about 45 meters a second, if not lower. So right here, 30, 40, 45, okay, about 50. So it can take off at 50 meters a second, that's not too bad. Gear up. Just derping around a little while we can, uh, while we wait. Whee! Of course, now that the, uh, the SAS toggles on and off for you when you make a maneuver, it's very easy to run this car. Before, it was kind of a one or the other deal. Like, I could either... I mean, it could, it could fly under its own power, but if you turn off the SAS, it would kind of go a little wobbly. I don't have that problem anymore now, obviously. Well, yeah, I can still turn it off and it'll still work. It's just a little harder to control. It just kind of... It spins on itself and stuff. Like, when you do... When you fly like this, obviously. Alright, so we're just gonna get, we're just gonna land here anywhere really, just so I can show you that it still works as a car too. Just bring it around a little. Alrighty, that does good. And level it back out. Bring the nose down. And prepare for landing. Gear. Cut the engines. Alright, we are good. You still have to take off and land with the Wrangler uh, landing gear, because if you happen to be landing it faster than... What is it? I don't remember. I think one to say higher than 60, uh, you'll blow out these tires. So we should be good to land right there. Coming in nice and soft. Seven meters a second. Alrighty, and we are down. Hit the brakes. Go ahead and release the gear. Get on the wheels. And now we can drive. It is RTG powered, as you can see 
Oh, where is it? RTGs. Oh, they're up here on the on the front end of the the cockpit. Four RTGs is all this thing needs. I say it like it's cheap or something. Uh, it has two 1K batteries, one here and one here. Not that it really needs them. Uh, it has the one of the the 180 fuel tank, the TL FLT 400, two delta wings, some struts. The struts seem to be pretty important because without it, I don't know why. I guess because it's only attached to this, you get like no stability on the back end. Like the torque alone will just rip the thing off. Well, let's see what else. A couple lights up front, obviously. Uh, two radial air intakes for lower atmospheric uh, efficiency. Because these provide a lot more oxygen than this, just this, obviously. Uh, two of these. The winglets. Two of them actually seems to be important. I remember when I had just one. Uh, it would roll better, but you had no lateral control. Like you saw how I was pressing D like that and just making it go left and right. It wouldn't do that before. Well, it could probably do that now because this engine vectors very heavily. But it wouldn't do it before. He actually can't get in and out of this. I've been thinking about removing the radials and adding the little uh, mobility enhancer things. Little ladders. So yeah, we can just drive on back to the runway. And repeat as many times as we want. No problem. Of course, my frame rate. I don't know what's my frame rate. With 0.22, that was fine. 0.23. It's like I'm getting like half frame rate that I normally so that I'm supposed to be. If I look straight down, I get about normal. So it's the sky. It's something with the terrain generation. I'll have to adjust my settings accordingly. Because like this, I obviously can't see where I'm going. I don't know if they fixed the... No. You still don't see anything in this cockpit. That sucks. Uh, let's go look at the Kerbal Mobile. That is something else I was working on. Oh, it's not the Kerbal Mobile, it's the Kerbal Mobile. Which is another car. I wonder if it worked. Obviously it worked, it's just parked there. I think Jeb is on it. Because this is Bob here. Uh, let's hope this thing is going to let me get over this without losing something. I got the, I get the feeling the engine is going to pop off. Called it. At this point, it's fine, though. We don't need it for anything. I can actually almost take off just under the the power of the wheels. Of course, the problem is, as soon as I hit back to pull up, it wants to reverse the the throttle on the, on the motors. So I can never actually take off with this. I have to, like, fall off a cliff or something. If I drive off something steep, I should be able to do it. Uh, brakes! I have full brakes on. Crap. Wow, this car's got some torque to it. Yeah, it's just another car design I've been working on. It's kind of like the flying car, but without, uh, without the flying part. It's just a very high-speed vehicle for wandering around on Kerbin, I guess. Let's go to it. Yep, it's got Jebediah in it. Let's uh, release the brakes and see how fast the thing can go. The other one was going about 35. Let's see if we can beat that. The amount of time it takes us to the runway, can we go faster than 35 at 36 meters per second? Let's 
Why not? Man, this lag. This one, I don't know why. It, it wants to pull to the left. Like, this thing cannot drive straight. It's not the it's not the reaction wheels. I have those actually turned off. So I don't know. If anybody knows why it might be doing that, why the the car would be randomly listing to one side or the other, it tends to want to pull left. Okay, this thing is slow as hell. What's the deal? So uh, just park it on the other side of the runway and we'll be done with it. So we can roll this sucker over. So now it's from the reaction wheels. If I go down this hill fast enough. And just like this. Yes! Barrel roll! Ooh, man, what happened? That's fine. Roll this thing back over. You got it. Come on. Roll it over. Come on, you got this. Let's toggle. Let's toggle this work on here. That should be enough to do it. There we go. Full reverse. And there we go. We're driving again. Kind of. Doesn't want to really go... Doesn't want to go left for some reason. It doesn't want to go up the hill for nothing. Go... Ah, oh, it sucks. Whee! It's probably loving that. Anyways, that'll do it for today's episode. I just wanted to show you what I've been up to. Uh, I still play the game. I just haven't been recording. It's just cycling through this. That sucks. I just haven't been recording much over the over the break. But I'm back. Uh, so Kerbal Space Program Mondays will resume very shortly. Uh, my next step is to get to Minmus, hopefully. I think I've got that figured out. It shouldn't be a problem. So anyways, I hope you enjoyed my little update. My my improvements on the flying car. If you would like the craft file, the like the parts, like the little vehicle file for the flying car, let me know and I will uh, put it in line somewhere and link it in the video description. Or now that we can put links in video comments, I can go ahead and do that too. So I'd like to thank you for watching. My name is JP, and I will see you next time with more Kerbal Space Program. Bye bye.